Welcome to Circuit Analysis. Today we're going to look at the new Bolt Circuit Simulator, which is my favorite circuit simulator and probably the best one on the market, and it's free at circuitanalysis.com. So here we are, you just download Bolt and make an account here. Then once you get logged in, you can download Bolt and you can join the Discord community, and that way you can ask questions about Bolt or just about circuit analysis and uh, power electronics, that kind of stuff. So download it here. So you might get this warning, it's pretty new, so Microsoft still needs some more time to validate the certificate, but you can see signed here is circuit analysis, so you can do run anyway. You can do agree. So here it is, and you just log in with your same username and password from the website, or you can use it as a guest. So now it's installed, and you can just try one of the examples here to see how it works. We're gonna do the buck converter. So here it is, and you can scroll up and down and um, shift, scroll left and right. So there's the circuit, and you just click the play button up here, then it will run the uh, analysis. So now you can check out the results here. See, this is the log from the simulator. See, it's using ng-spice 39 here, and you can see the output voltage rising here. So this is V out. That corresponds to this out node right here. And then you have here the waveform V out. So this is what defines this waveform. And this down here is a formula that gets the steady state output. So it's a range of V out from 0.9 to 1. So it's getting the average between these two points here. And then you can zoom in and check out the waveform. So you can see it's kind of broken up into three sections right here. I can go over this is the parts section here and you have these libraries. So if you right click here, you can right click um, up at the top and do new library, open library. On this library, you can edit the library and stuff like that. To get the parts, you just drag them off. So you can get new parts here, add them to the schematic and then you can just hit the delete button to get rid of them. So then in the middle here we have the schematic drawing and have all the parts on here and you can move all these around and they'll stay connected. Control Z and go back and, and then when we run the simulation we have the output over here with the waveform viewer. And you can see on the waveform the top here you have the different waveforms. And the way it works is you can add more waveforms down here. You put like a uh, formula V for voltage, and then you just type the name of the node. So like, if you want to see the input, it's just a flat line. The switching one, you can see the switch waveforms here. And then down here, you can add more formulas here. So you just click the plus, and then there's these equations. And um, to see how all the equations work and what they are, you right click here and then do edit functions. And this here is all the equations. And if you just, you can copy and paste these and like rewrite them. You can just write your own equations in here in this format and then they'll show up and you can call them in the waveform viewer. So we can get rid of all these guys here. And there's some options in the view tab here. You can just zoom full if you want to get a good uh, 100%. Now the real superpower behind the Bolt circuit simulator is that unlike most circuit simulators that try and abstract and hide the SPICE code, it actually tries to complement the code and interact with the code. So like, for example, you can double click anywhere here just in a blank space and you'll get the net list for the circuit. So this is what's fed to the simulator and what is actually being run. And that's how all circuit simulators work. Um, but here you can see if you just start throwing other parts in and you double click it again you can see it's updated so it's pretty easy to um, see what you're doing in real time so now how does it generate this net list from this circuit drawing and it's actually real simple each of these symbols has um, some properties so if you right click it has template and settings so if you click on the settings it has the pins and it has properties. And down here, the definitions are different models, so you could have multiple models for one symbol. But you can see here, if you do template, this is what actually gets injected into the netlist. So the netlist generator basically just leaps through all the parts, 
and it just copies and pastes whatever's in this template field into the netlist. And you can have as many lines as you want in each of these. And there's just a few little simple keywords here. So the question mark before the letter, that just says that you got to start this line with that letter. So this line in Spice denotes that this is a voltage source. So if you were going to call it something else that started with a J or something like that, this question mark just tells it to put a V in front of that. So it just makes sure that it starts with this V. And then this dollar sign with the brackets around it, that adds a property in its place. So it's adding whatever value is in the ref property in here. And same with this one here. So it's the value that's in the value property. And these here with the pound sign or the hash, those are the pins. So that tells it to write the spice, you get the voltage reference name, pin one, pin two, DC is just text. And then this here is the value, which in this case, these two things here are VN for the ref and 24 volts for the value. So if we go back to the settings, you can see that's right here. This is the ref. Its value is VN. This is the value property and its value is 24 volts. And over here, you can regular click on these and you can choose if you want to display them or not. So you could not display that. Or if you do both, it'll show you the value equals 24. So it's the same for all the rest of these two. You can check out the templates of everything. This one's got a lot of different properties that get injected here to make this template. And then uh, also these node names here. These are the node names and it'll just automatically assign numbers to them. But if you want, you can change the name. So like if you double click on here, I could call this C hit enter and then now the nodes name is C and then you can just give it a number again. There's also some things up here where you can relabel all nets or just the numbered nets. So if I do just the numbered nets, it'll leave the ones you've already labeled and it just orders them from, you know, left to right, top to bottom, renumbering them. So this capacitor here, it has a little bit of a extra thing added to its template here. So see, I added IC equals and then IC. And then here you can do um, add a property called IC. So that will put this IC value and it's displaying it here. So now if you double click on here, you can change this and this sets the initial voltage of the capacitor. So now to actually set up the simulation, you use this net symbol here. And this is just a blank symbol and if you double click on that then you can see its template because you can right click and do template but all it really has is a template it's basically just dumping whatever you put in here into the bottom of the netlist so that's why I called it netlist end this is a model for this uh, diode here and you can see it's calling that because it's uh, in its template it's got the model name, which is 1N5822. And then that goes over here. It's calling this model. And then these options here are just for the solver. Those are pretty much the defaults. So just they're here so you can change the values if you want to try and help with convergence or stuff like that. This part here is required for Bolt to operate because this uh, tells it to output a binary file which gets parsed and then loaded into the waveform viewer. These are all comments here, the green ones that start with a star. These are just things you can uncomment if you want to change different things. This is the transient simulation that's being run. So it's five microseconds maximum time step for each point, And then it's a one millisecond full simulation time. And you can see if you put this UIC flag here, then it uses the initial conditions. So that's why it's using this IC equals zero and starting the output at zero volts. And you see it rise up to the final voltage. This transient, this is one that just has this, you can do a start time and a max time if you want the simulation data to start saving, not at the beginning of the simulation. Like if you want it to wait till it gets to steady state, then there's these other kind of simulations too. There's the AC analysis and the operating point analysis. 
So then how do you know what all the syntax for all this code should be? Well, for that, you've got to go here, Google ng-spice, and then you can click on the ng-spice uh, website here. It's open source, and go to the documentation, and then you can get this ng-spice user's manual. So here it is, 700 and something pages. So you can scroll down here, look through the table of contents, and they've got the different types of analyses, and uh, here's a sub-circuit model, elementary devices, so like a resistor. Here you go, it tells you how to write the SPICE code for the resistor. So you've got R1 or 2 or whatever, and then you got positive node, the negative node, and then the resistance. Here's some examples, R1, 1, 2, 100 ohms. So that's basically how it works for the specific models of diodes and transistors and things like that. You can download the models from the manufacturer and then just paste them in either the diodes template or the in netlist here and just call them all out and you can build your circuits and simulate them. Well, that's a brief overview, so go ahead and download it and join the Discord. I'll put some links in the description and uh, I'll work on making some more videos too, modeling different types of circuits. So if you've got any requests, go ahead and put them in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.